This week's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, people think some huge trauma needs to happen before you can use therapy, but really, you can use therapy to get the tools before something bad happens. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful and learn some new things to help navigate life. She's like, there I was all on my own, and then a magical black man chopped all my wood and vanished. And literally, he vanishes. She says, I'm going to go get you a piece of pie. She's yelling at him through the door while she goes in to get the pie. And when she comes out, he's fucking gone. Like, yep. <laughs> I love the optics of that where she goes inside and like, you know, if it's not bad enough, she shuts and locks the door behind her. <laughs> <laughs> she rolls up the window to her house. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the uh, brains and the muscle of the operation, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Thank you, Heath. I did, well, not a clap push-up, but I did clap. I clapped while lying on the ground oh, okay. to get ready for this, so yeah. <laughs> Getting yoked. Psyched. And we also have two very special guest maskists. They're going to be the talent of the operation you know him as two-thirds of the uncles dan and doug from the how to heretic podcast are here gentlemen welcome back thank you we're alive yeah you got the the good too also yes. <laughs> mark sucks so <laughs> all right let's get right into this movie i guess dan what are we going to be breaking down today we watched the fighting preacher it's the story of a violent sociopath invading a small, peaceful community <laughs> and attacking the townsfolk Literally as happens. he begins the now century-old tradition of Mormons amassing enormous tracts of land. <laughs> but along the way, he does learn the most valuable lesson of all, that Mormons are just as persecuted as black people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are going to try to say that a bunch. They, they really, really are, are going to make that argument. Also, did you guys know, do you have any idea how much land the Mormon church actually does own? Mm, I mean, if I were to guess, yeah. one million acres in the Americas alone. <laughs> okay, cool. You're <laughs> just going <laughs> to read my, read my notes. That's fine. <laughs> what? No, I just know that shit. What? No. The Mormons actually own 2% of Florida. That's not, that's real. <laughs> they own more, more of Florida than the, the Mouse Corporation. So, wow. That's a, that's a cute I wouldn't thing. own 2% of Florida if you gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, is that some kind of punishment for the rest right? of the land they own? <laughs> no, no, you bought too much of Utah. You have to take 1% of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's about right. And Doug. How bad was this movie? Well, if you like underdog boxing movies, but always wish the underdog was a psychopathic dick that taunts his opponents like a child and never loses a fight, you <laughs> will love this movie. It's, Fuck yeah, you will. Uh, also, also, if you like boxing, boxing movies that only have one scene of boxing. That, mm -hmm. that's God, there were so many times where I was like, I need it to be boxing soon. This is too much. <laughs> Not, there were bo it's, it's supposed to be boxing. Come on. Yeah, for real. All right. Is there anything you guys would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, yeah. I got it. I, this movie had the best worst old age makeup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have literally never seen anything like it. They aged this main couple from their 20s to 70 something. And something went really very wrong because, <laughs> look, I know they didn't have the budget for like super good Hollywood prosthetics and stuff, but. I literally could have done better with three eggs of silly putty and some spray paint. <laughs> he literally, he, he just looks like he developed severe cystic acne and somehow she ends up looking younger, but you know, with slightly grayer hair. It's the weirdest. I don't know. I think they got the Delta variant of the Benjamin Button disease. <laughs> <laughs> I want to nominate this film for best worst magic black guy. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. know that's a bit of a spoiler, but don't worry. It won't matter to you or the plot or the characters of the movie at all. Yeah. yeah. The only black character in this movie will literally watch the characters ride off into the sunset as though to say, wait, am I not going to be in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think they showed him a totally different script and then just cut him out of it. Yeah. When he stepped in front of the camera at the end of the movie, I screamed. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so bad. 
All right. I'm going to go with best worst movie poster. <laughs> now, I've pasted a shot of it here. So it's the fighting preacher and it's the guy. <laughs> the guy is, he's a boxer. Yeah. And he, he's wearing boxing gloves that say love on the right fist <laughs> and kindness on the left fist. Uh-huh. Like like he's in Cape Fear, but like Mormon <laughs> passive aggressive yep. Cape uh-huh. Fear. It's so bad. There's also a lynch mob and a wife who's way too young for him that seems to enjoy him in the way she's looking at him. Nothing makes sense. It also says he believed in the laying on of hands. And that the is bad. a pun that they are certain is fantastic that they will use throughout. Can I just say, by the way, that one of the things that also doesn't make sense about this poster is just the fucking title of the movie. Right. <laughs> because Mormons don't have preachers. That's not a thing that Mormons do. <laughs> nope. Also, this this poster might lead you to believe that this is a movie about boxing. It was, yeah, yeah, or preachers, yeah. And I'm gonna go with best worst costume anachronisms. This <laughs> oh movie, my god! Oh my god! We'll talk. This movie doesn't manage to stay time consistent within the same shot, let alone the film. <laughs> oh no, not within the same co- like costume. Like one yeah. person later. I, yeah, we'll talk about it. But my god, someone's wearing a fucking. Rush T-shirt and an <laughs> iPhone five, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just the costumes either. It's literally everything about yeah. this movie. It's rough. All right, we're gonna take a quick break, and then we'll be back to tell you all about the fighting preacher. Brothers, the time has come again to write a Mormon history movie. God damn it! Fine, okay. Who didn't Joseph Smith rape this time? Who are we? Nope. Lying nope, about. we're doing a we're doing a different guy. Uh, we're doing Willard Bean for this one. Uh, Wi- Willard Bean? Yeah, you know the missionary who won hearts and minds in a town where he was hated for his Mormonism. W- was was he? Nope, no, not really. Uh, but we can say he was. We can say they hated him. Yeah, that's uh, true. I guess so. Fine. Wait, didn't Willard actually win the town over by paying giant bribes for so-called Mormon historical sites? Yes. Yes, he did. But we are going to say that he boxed people and uh, baked them pies. And that's why everyone sold him a full third of the county? Because of pies? Because That doesn't make any sense. People aren't going to believe that. (laughs) I mean, Dave, our religion is based, at least in part, on a guy making an atemporal steel sword by looking at it. By looking at it. No, that's that's a really good point. Let's make a movie. I want to get boxed. Hey, Lucinda. What are you doing here? You're not in this episode. You're not in this episode either, Noah. Touche. But I had a quick question about our wireless bill. Do you have any idea what this seven bucks a month for weatherproofing is? What? And this five dollar a month greens maintenance? I, uh... And there's a fifteen dollar charge here that just says because you never know. Wow. Well, if you're sick of paying mystery fees, why not switch over to Mint Mobile? What's... Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile is the first company to sell wireless service online only. By cutting out the retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that get passed out to you in the form of mystery fees. Instead, Mint just passes on sweet savings direct to you. Well, that sounds great. If you already know about that, though, why are we still paying these fees? Uh, We're not. Actually, I switched over to Mint Mobile almost a year ago, and I'm literally paying less than a third what I was paying before. Their plans start at just 15 bucks a month, and all plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Well, then, the opening of this ad makes no sense. I I know. It's just kind of a theme that Eli has established. Huh. And the best part is I got to keep my same phone with all the existing contacts. Plus, if you're not 100% satisfied with their service, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Awesome. How do I, how does one sign up? To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped directly to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. So wait, do, do we have to maintain our own greens then? I guess. There's nothing about it in the copy. Huh. And we're back. And we're going to start in St. Louis, Missouri in 1905 during a really sad boxing match that's actually for the world championship. <laughs> we're going to learn. Yeah, the title card says, based on a true story, a true 
love story. And it starts with two men punching each other. And I was like, <laughs> okay, movie, I'm willing to see where you go with this. <laughs> All Mormon movies should start with a title card that says, based on a bunch of faith affirming lies. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. One thing they're not actually lying about here is this guy, we're about to meet him. His name is Willard Bean. He was a world champion of boxing in 1905. His record, his lifetime record was eight and seven with three draws on top of that. But really? he really what? was the world champion. Yeah. It's a solid record right there. Eight and seven, <laughs> over 500. Well, this world apparently only consisted of a few dozen people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, in the fine tradition of all boxing movies, there are 42 punches landed in the first three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be fair, this was when white people were in charge of boxing. So it was just everyone politely standing there taking turns punching each other until <laughs> someone fell down. Oh, yeah. This was like the old style boxing. Whoever first decided to stop doing the like Marcus of Queensbury, like the fist curled up thing. They must have mm -hmm. fucked everybody up for a while. Yeah, Punching his name normal. was Cassius Clay, and you can watch <laughs> the video on YouTube. <laughs> it also pops up that it's T.C. Christensen, and I was like, fuck, I hate that I know what that means. I'm yeah. mad about my life that I know what's coming now. Yeah, you guys are probably very familiar with his oeuvre. God. Yeah, one of the producers was Remember Films, and I wrote in my notes, that is the best name for a Christian producer ever. <laughs> Remember Films? <laughs> Remember when we made movies? Stupid. So now we cut over to Richfield, Utah, where our story's going to begin. Yeah, this is Willard Bean and his wife, Rebecca. And he says, why do you love me? They're dancing together. It's supposed to be romantic. He says, why do you love me? And she says, I, uh, I have no idea. I really don't know. I was like, it's a good start. And then he'll go on through the rest of the movie to prove her point. Yep. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I happen to know Richfield, Utah, and it is a shithole today. I can only imagine what it must have been like in 1905. My guess would be Valdosta, Georgia now. Sure. Yeah, that's possible. That's it's possible. literally one of those places where when the Mormons all landed in the Salt Lake Valley, all of the bad people got sent far away so that they didn't have to deal with them. So we, we know they're from good stock. Ah, it's, it's, it's the Australia of Utah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. right. Or the Georgia of the United States. Valdosta. Yeah. Right, yeah. But this is going to be the plot of the movie. They are they have bought the Joseph Smith farm back in Palmyra, New York, and they need Willard Bean and his wife to stay there and restart the church. Yeah, or just just squat on the land so that like nobody burns down the house or whatever. <laughs> right. They don't make any attempts. They really make almost zero attempts to proselytize, which is one of the first things that we notice that makes this not real life because we know Mormons <laughs> and that's what they would do. And this is the inciting incident of the movie. This is where the, you know, the, that character should say to them, I want you to go to the, the live in this house and, you know, start the you know, proselytize or buy the land that we've lost something, you know, he doesn't really tell them what to do. Just go be there. Yeah. And then we find yeah, out what their right. mission is later in the movie. They send a letter <laughs> in like 1905, which takes right. for fucking ever to go from Utah to New York to eventually be like, OK, here's why we made you go to fucking upstate New York. It's I forgot to mention in our meeting. Yeah. You have to buy a hill for us on top of this. Yeah, that's <laughs> the actual inciting incident that happens way later. That's true. <laughs> right. Also, this is Willard's second wife. Like in real life, he had two wives. This is his second one. So. That means they're not going to like fucking star cloud heaven together, right? No, actually, it doesn't mean that because, as you know, uh, Mormon theology, even after they ditched polygamy in practice here on Earth, air quotes, you get <laughs> you still get to be a polygamist in the afterlife. So if this were her second husband, she wouldn't get to be in star heaven with him. But since it's a man with two wives. He gets to go with both of them. Oh, uh, I get it. So like, wow. you, you, that's, that's an amazing distinction. That's real. Yeah. You that. have like a starter Pokemon, but then you can collect other Pokemon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty good stuff. Wow. Yeah. So bottom line, this old guy in the church makes him go to Palmyra and they flash to Palmyra for a second. And there's a VO of Willard Bean being like, this is a hostile area for us. And <laughs> when that when that gets said, all we're watching is 
one black guy just sitting there. <laughs> yeah. Being black. This is a hostile area. The optics on that were amazing. This may or may not be the first appearance of the magic black guy. I couldn't tell if it was the same actor, but there's because there's no person of color on the IMDb page. Again, this movie's wow. pretty sure he's going to be in the movie, but no, no. <laughs> Chekhov's black guy remains unfired Chekhov's throughout this film. Guy. Yeah. And th this is when Willard, like, pops out of the flash ahead. He's like, sorry, ba uh, popping back out of the flash ahead. That sounds terrible going to Palmyra. Did you see that black guy? That was ridiculous. <laughs> and, and also, by the way, didn't we, like, fuck over everyone last time we were there, like, 85 years ago? Probably, like, murder and steal and do a whole bunch of bad stuff. <laughs> Old church guy's like, yep. Now, I hate to contradict you on this, Heath, but the real truth is that Palmyra is just where Joseph Smith's family lived when he decided to do a religion. Like, he left New York for Ohio, like, a year after organizing the church, and he had, like, seven members max. So it's literally the only place in Mormon history where the Mormons didn't make a ton of enemies and then get run out of <laughs> town. Awesome. Exactly. So the whole plot of this movie is based on fucking nothing. There's, yeah. wow. there's literally that's, nothing that's there. Fantastic. It's like Kentucky claiming to be the land of Lincoln. Right? <laughs> so sure enough, they pull up to Palmyra to see their new home. But this is where the wife is going to break the news that well, she... <laughs> <laughs> is she gonna break it? okay she tries so yeah they're they're on their wagon on the way to this farmhouse in palmyra and rebecca the wife is like so uh willard were joe smith's kids born at the farmhouse and he's like i don't know he's like oh cool um follow-up question do they have any good doctors here in palmyra new york in 1915 he's like i don't know i don't know do they have gynecologists i don't know why are you asking me all these questions <laughs> do they have uh, fetuses inside my belly here in 1915 in Palmyra, and you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. Look, it cuts to a title screen that says half a mile later, and he goes, wait a second, you're pregnant. And I know that that's a comedy beat, and I don't want to be the person who takes everything too literally, but Porson Cart, according to Google, goes two to three miles an hour. That means 15 minutes to a half hour later, he was like, you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and when he does figure it out, he does an impromptu backflip out of the cart <laughs> onto the ground, yeah. lands it perfectly, which I I got to say is a solid way to establish that your main character is an athletic idiot. Like, the, yeah. you've done a it great works. job in one moment. That's oh. why we start every live show with Heath doing a backflip. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I got to point out, this is probably the best point to do it, is David McConnell, who plays uh, Mr. Bean, was actually, he has a pretty good IMDb page, and one of the films he was in is Troll 2. What? You guys, oh, get the fuck out of here. Yep, he was Who in is Troll he in 2. Troll 2? Who was he? Yeah. He was like, he, do you remember the scene where... No. Go. <laughs> <laughs> the, Tell us this anyway. is true. The evil woman seduces him with an ear of corn. Yeah. Wait, that's, <laughs> that's, that's him. This guy? Yeah. <laughs> All right. The universes are combining this is interesting <laughs> yeah. and hey it's something that this guy can be like yeah troll 2 was the second worst film I've been in. <laughs> <laughs> not great wish it was all like troll 2 yeah. but they finally make it to joe smith's family home and wouldn't you know it it's shitty <laughs> <laughs> and as they pull up he notices a note like attached to the door and literally goes hey honey uh, you wait here in the cart for no reason. Nothing suspicious. I'm just going to run up to the door really fast and then come back for you. No, you're acting weird. Shut up. <laughs> yes, I read a note while I was over there and I had a three, four minute panic attack. It's nothing. You're being weird. You're being weird. Nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, he checks the note and it is offering a $5,000 reward from the Anti-Mormon League. For reference, I, I did a little search that's $158,000 today's money. <laughs> okay, and it's not a reward. It's a bounty, to be clear. Yeah. A, so, dead reward. Yeah, it says, beware, Mormons. Yeah, can I turn some people in? Are they still offering? I know. Does I, I literally was like, does the Anti-Mormon League still exist? Are they, are they still paying out? Because I <laughs> would like to either cash in or at least join. I would yeah. at least join. <laughs> I will give them one Bryce Blake. <laughs> <laughs> also, doesn't this mean they've had the anti-Mormon league in this 
town in Palmyra for like 85 years with no Mormons in town, and they just had it still going. Exactly. That is the most effective anti-Mormon league that has ever existed. They are <laughs> really good at what they do. I will say this. This scene was the part when I looked at uh, Willard Bean's face and thought, oh, yeah, I, that definitely looks like he's been hit a lot. So that <laughs> then I was like, okay, the casting makes sense. Yeah. 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 Troll 2 was a violent set. It was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that night, they're going to get their first visitors from unfriendly townsfolk. Yes. <laughs> and it is a salty sea captain, wimpy from Popeye, and a five foot tall 1830s French bicycle repairman with a rifle. <laughs> that is extremely accurate. That is who's at the door. And they're like, basically, they've basically formed a lynch mob. They're yeah. presumably the, the anti Mormon League. So he opens up the door. I wanted him to be like, hey, gentlemen, who wants $5,001? <laughs> yeah, it's like they formed a lynch mob and a bunch of people said they were coming on Facebook, but then only three of them showed up. They're obviously disappointed in the turnout. Yeah, the town's three most diabetic septuagenarians show up. <laughs> yeah. Except that it's three guys who are big and have a gun. Thank like, you. They they win, right? Like, what the fuck? They are not aware, though. They, so so they're like, we all had a meeting. You guys have to leave. And he's like, I'm sorry. I thought this was America. So they're arguing back and forth. Then he's like, you know what? Why don't we box for it to settle this dispute? And okay, wait. Wait, wait, wait. But he's doing the slowly, threateningly undressed thing. But... He's 1905 dressed, so he's got to take off like six ruffles and a corset. It's a lot. It really loses a lot of its, it's power. A, it's, a, it's a slow roll. You got to start doing that early if you're going to yeah. start into a boxing thing. But he's doing it. He's doing that whole thing. And he's like, all right, we're going to box for this. And you watch this gang that literally has guns, like you said. And they're like, we got guns. But he's like weirdly confident. I don't know. Yeah. All right, regroup. We're going to come back. I don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. We're going to come back and we're going to figure this out. Yeah. So they leave. They had to go back to the townspeople and be like, he said no, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> did you show him the gun? Did he know that you were threatening him? Well, yeah. Well, what did he say? Well, he threatened to beat us up. But you had a gun, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you show him the gun? Yes. But did he have a gun too? Um, no, he did not no. have a gun. You're saying he did not also have a gun, <laughs> but 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 he took his shirt off slow. Yeah, it was very scary. You you weren't there. You Shut weren't up. There, Steve. He you rolled weren't up his there. sleeves in a very threatening manner. He, he undressed in front of us like a French aristocrat. What do you want us to do? <laughs> he took off his cummerbund. Well, since you failed, we're forced to move on to Plan B. What is that? Go back and shoot him. Worse, we're going to be super unfriendly. Like. <laughs> For lots of years, so ha! We're gonna treat him like we'll treat our gay kids forever. <laughs> yeah, we should have got that whole conversation because it would have been hilarious. They don't do that. We do get the other side of it though. Willard goes back inside, and Rebecca, his wife, is like, "Hey, honey, maybe a little bold on that. Did did you know what the big metal tube was that they all had? <laughs> I'll explain later. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about See, it. See, I really wanted to be like, no, I was trying to fuck those guys, and I even said we could go three on one. I, I, don't I know thought I were. was centrally undressing nicely yeah. for them. I was literally about to kneel down, and then they just left. It was and weird. They left. I would have loved it if there was a title card that said half a mile later. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, wait a minute. Holy was that shit, a gun? Those guys had a gun? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we cut to the next day. The wife is washing the walls and setting everything up in the new house. Also, she had one of those like shitty Walmart signs for the wall, like no cussing, no mussing, no back. <laughs> like in 1915 on her wall. Liveth, laugheth, loveth. It was it was literally like computer Ooh. printed cross stitch. Yes. It was not good. <laughs> So now he's going to head into town, and this is where we're going to get a first taste of that unfriendliness at the buggy shop. Well, except, that, can I just say, he tells her that he's heading into town and says, I won't be back until late, and she gets worried. What the fuck is he doing in upstate New York in small town in the middle of the night out there fucking, like, n nothing's going to be open. He right. doesn't know anybody. I don't know, I'm... Might do some Molly, roll a little bit. I'm going to hang out in Palmyra for a while. Literally, like, the the worried look on her face is not for her own safety, but because she knows that he's about to bring something back from the brothel that he's about, that he's clearly <laughs> headed off to. Yeah. 
that's a deleted scene that you can only get on the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Just him being refused service at the brothel. Oh, come on! <laughs> but sure enough, that is what happens to him at the buggy shop. He needs a new smeagle tree for his buggy and they're like we're not gonna sell it to you and i i really wanted the rest of this movie for him to just be slowly taking his shirt off every time someone <laughs> says no to him. it has the feel of we look we don't serve colored i mean um uh, mormons here <laughs> I, yep. it, it's exactly that scene i'm sure that there was a moment when one of the actors is like really we're we're being this harsh and it's just a mormon what's happening and can i just say like look the rest of this movie will be about this, but it is amazing that Mormons have literally run this play everywhere they have ever gone ever, right? They show yeah. up somewhere. They're like, I'm not a crazy cult. Don't be racist. You can be racist against me. And everyone's like, all right, fine. You can be part of our I am God Emperor. Soda is illegal. <laughs> there it is. Okay. See, when you said I'm not a crazy cult at the beginning, right away, I was just like, now I feel like you are. And then you said that just now really loud in the middle. You're of not the married. You're not married. <laughs> if you've been chased across an entire continent because everywhere you stop, everyone hates you. Look in the mirror. You're the yeah. problem. Right? <laughs> it's time for some <laughs> introspection. Yeah. And then he's going to get heckled outside. Uh, one of the, the again, I love more anti-Mormon heckles in these movies. Someone stops him and goes, "Hey, Willard, seen any angels lately?" Yeah, Ooh. which is a solid Mormon burn, actually, from that time. <laughs> Someone uh, sprays him with a hose, and he assaults that person. He he assaults that person. Yeah. Well, this is uh, here's the thing. At this point in the movie, crazy billionaire money. I want to remake this movie told from the perspective of the townspeople. Because the Bean family is a violent menace. <laughs> it's a good movie. And the town, it's a better movie. It's much better. And the movie. town people have to band together if they want to survive. <laughs> if you think about this from that perspective, it's yeah. a much better movie. I want the perspective of the one black guy. The, <laughs> the, guy the, the protagonist of this movie. Who just moves mysteriously throughout the, the film. I, I got to say, though, this guy, first of all, this guy sprays him with a hose and then he lays him out, literally knocks him out one punch through the rest of the scene. The guy is just laying there s completely still. Like, it's not good to be unconscious on your back. <laughs> no, I don't think. No, that's like attempted murder. And he, nobody rushes to his aid or anything. <laughs> right. yeah. This is this is a professional world champion boxer. Literally, that's like attempted murder with a deadly weapon. You're in jail. Right? You should be in jail. Yeah. Straight and up assault. Honestly, Mormons, do you really want to invite comparisons between your guy, the hero of your movie, and Fight Club? I don't. I just <laughs> feel like and it's it's weird because it's played as such a wackety schmackety do comedy beat. Yeah, right. Because it's just like just like wood old man, and he's old too. It's not like a young healthy man was fucking with him. He's like no. an old sixty five plus year old man. This is not the last old man that he will just lay out. No, no either. And, but I do got to say, Palmyra has really good water pressure. They do <laughs> right. Yeah. And and modern hoses. It's very exactly. it's impressive because uh, it doesn't seem like they would have had hoses that just squirt water in that time. But it, fine. He takes out a super soaker. Okay. <laughs> I feel like this is anachronistic. What is that? So now the town is going to try their hand at scaring Rebecca out of town. They uh, they show up at the door as she's sweeping in the dark alone. <laughs> yeah. She's just moving dust to a slightly different area of the floor. Whatever. <laughs> right. There's that. <laughs> then she answers the door and she's like, my, my husband's not here, but you know, considering the fact that all of our encounters in this town have been incredibly hostile, please come in. <laughs> right. Isn't it very, like, they're pretending to be Mormon seekers here, but she just doesn't get that? Like, So I fell down a crazy rabbit hole with this. <laughs> so a ton of this movie, apparently, is based on the fireside chats yes. of Rebecca Bean. That's right. What? Okay. Can you guys explain what the fuck these fireside chats are? Because I can I can say what I Googled they are, but do you have any idea what they actually are? Oh, it, my it's God. It's the Mormon lecture circuit. Yeah. A disproportionate amount of my youth was wasted at fireside chats. And there, there is no fire. Just FYI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's nothing so exciting. They're just talks. They're just uh, Fridays and Saturday nights. You go to the church house and an old person tells you a clearly 
made up story. Okay, because yeah. that that is what this incident is based on is Rebecca's story, and I actually found it on like Mormon dot org or whatever the fuck it is. I found like a copy of her telling this story, the transcript, and she's like, "One night I opened the door and everyone started yelling at me, but then." <laughs> I prayed to Jesus for help, and they all left. <laughs> Which, yeah, like, that's what we watch, yeah. Just the realism for, I want their version where they're like, hello, uh, we need you to know that you're a sinner and Mormonism is wrong. And she just like slowly starts to shit herself. And they're like, you know what? We're going to go. We're going <laughs> to go. No, but you got to understand that Mormons love this narrative. Like, the whole idea that mean people will see the holiness and the sincerity in their countenance and just be awestruck by they fucking love that shit. Yeah, every every Mormon has a version of this story that they'll spend their entire lives workshopping. I oh, promise. and and they do. They <laughs> workshop it. This is what this is how you know that the fireside chat means that it's fake cuz she would she started to tell this story at one fireside chat and it just and she just, you know, she just workshopped it, got it better, honed and refined, crafted until it was like completely not based in any kind of reality, but was a much more faith affirming story. I, what I'm hearing is Mormonism is the first gamer cake. <laughs> <laughs> Ethics in gaming journalism. Yeah. Eli, yeah. Thank you. No, you, Eli, you're spot on to this. So it, and we find out at the end that her husband died and she lived another 27 years. And basically her, her job was to tell these stories over and over so several times for the rest of the movie, we're going to find ourselves in these utterly bizarre narratives where it's just her telling, you know, this story. So that, yeah, that's exactly what happened after this. You're 100 percent on. Yeah, I, I, I wish they had like a different tint to the lens every time we were getting one of her <laughs> bullshit stories. They will, I admit, get crazier than one time people came over and were rude and I shat myself and they left. But yeah, this is definitely the first one. Oh. So now we watch them walking in town and ooh, everybody's shunning them. Someone crosses the street so they don't get Mormonitis. And this this is where she's searching for a nurse for her baby. I love this scene. <laughs> right. And they all refuse her service. Yep. Every one of them. Didn't they take their hippopotamus oath? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although she's Mormon, she should be very used to doors being slammed in her face. <laughs> it's the job. Yeah. So we cut back to the farm and, oh, she's so upset. And we I don't know why they kept this scene in the movie. She's like, well, it seems like you're going to have to deliver my baby Willard. And he's like, ew, gross. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That's your vagina? Yeah. So. And there's no arc to this. Remember, he says no, gross, and eventually gets you know, rescued from having to actually do it. Yeah. There's no like moment where he's like, all right, I love you. I'm going to do this. We're going to get through it together. Nope. No. She literally says, you've delivered horses and cows. And he's like, yeah, but have you seen yourself down there? It's <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, honey, I have a strict policy regarding human vaginas. So, <laughs> in only. After she said that, I really wanted to flash cut over to him up to the shoulder and her. You said I should do it. I don't understand. <laughs> Mad at me. Gloves that go all the way up to his, his shoulders. So they get doors slammed in their face some more. Uh, we cut to him shoveling mud on his farm and apparently someone stopped by just to tell him to fuck himself in this city. <laughs> the guy starts like 200 <laughs> yards away and just berates him the entire way. Just it's so long. Walking right up to a Mormon guy. Fuck you. And then he punches that guy in the face and knocks him out too. Knocks yeah. him out. Yeah. An another 60 plus year old man. Yep. Yeah. I mean, everything was fatal back then, but certainly getting knocked unconscious was fatal in 1905 or whenever it was. Everything was fatal. Yes. Absolutely correct. Also, yeah. one little detail in this scene, there's a cow. So Willard has oh, a cow God. and the camera keeps going to the cow over and over while this guy's yelling Mormon slurs at him. I thought the cow was going to get involved. Did not, didn't it seem like that was going to be part <laughs> so of the conflict? So did the fucking cow, my friend. <laughs> it's even worse. You know what it was is every time the guy was berating him, every time he was supposed to swear, they would cut to the cow mooing. Oh. Yeah. Is that what you that, Yeah. That hilarious... <laughs> Trope. Yeah, the only explanation I had is that this was based on the cow's fireside chat later. <laughs> <laughs> you right. know, move, move, you move, know move, your move. movie's well written when one of four people is the only one who gets the joke and he had to watch it twice. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So the cow is like the Swiss cheese porn of like the <laughs> audio in this moment. Yeah. 
So now he's going to read a letter from the Mormon church. And, and by the way, this is where they're going to correct themselves, like we talked about earlier. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, I should have told you. Please also <laughs> buy the hill and like three quarters of the rest of the county while you're there. Yeah. R- I forgot to tell you why you rode your buggy across North America. Right. <laughs> I love the idea. That, uh, hey, you know that hill that we claim Joseph found priceless antiquities made of literally hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of dollars worth of pure gold buried in. Yeah, go see if the owners are willing to sell that. (laughs) When he started reading the letter, I thought it was going to say, Dear Brother Bean, we've heard some disturbing reports of violence by you upon the townsfolk of Palmyra. (laughs) (laughs) Did you punch out an old guy for spraying you with a hose? (laughs) Okay, I have a question. So this letter, we see it for a second, and it says, From the Twelve. Who are the Twelve? What is that? The Twelve Apostles. Doi. Okay, I still have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> there is, it's look, we really don't need to go into the entire structure of the Mormon church, but it's just the higher ups. It's there's there's the prophet and his first presidency, and then there's the quorum of the twelve apostles, and they're all very, very important. Oh, it's are, like a rotating senate body. That's, Basically, a, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Got Except it. because, it's based on how much you donate to the church. <laughs> oh, so it's like yeah. a rotating senate body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 15 literally interchangeable, very old white men. Yeah. It's like a rotating so. Senate body. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where we're going to meet Mr. Never. He's going to be as close as we'll get to a running joke in this movie. They go to this hill and they're like trying to check it out. And he shows up again with a gun, shoots into the air next to them and is like, get the fuck off my hill or I'll murder you. <laughs> And they're like, are you not doing uh, like an open house right now? Can we? Okay, gun. No, got it. Got it. You're not. Okay. Well, and his way of dealing with the, the Bean's way of dealing with this guy is to get really bitingly sarcastic at him for so long. Yeah. So, so long. <laughs> and then, and then after he has just like literally taunted a man with a rifle or with, with a shotgun who has already proven that he's willing to fire it. He then goes, ah, but let's be friends. You want to be friends? Shake hands. Come on. It's no? the best. And that guy's like, are you being passive aggressive? I can't tell if you're being passive aggressive. <laughs> I don't know what's happening right now. My metal tube, I thought I had power because of this. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy is literally trespassing. Also, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And can we talk about, like, does, does anybody really want this hill? I mean, it is not a hill. <laughs> it is a hillock. Like, it is the most useless piece of land in America. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, yeah, it's kind of amazing. I think you're right, Heath. I think that maybe the thing that makes this movie make sense is that Willard Bean didn't know what a gun was. I really, <laughs> I really think that's true. Yeah. <laughs> we actually get another scene later where it, it that makes even more sense. Yes. Yeah. We get a flashback. He didn't he didn't know like 20 years ago what guns were either. Yeah, yeah, if you get hit in the head enough, you actually come down with a condition called gun blindness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at the end of the scene, he says, what's your name? And the guy says, never. And again, that's going to be the the running joke. He's Mr. Never. Yeah. So that night, they're talking about how does Willard stay so positive in the face of all this very real, very historically valid oppression? <laughs> Which his answer is just, <laughs> I, I hit people. Uh, have, you tried, have you tried hitting people? <laughs> yes. it, it works great. We're going to get a flashback to his first mission in Tennessee in 1893. He tells us that the Mormons they sent before him got murdered. And so they were like, all right, we should send our violent guy. Maybe our violent guy can make some progress there. (laughs) Totally. And he went to a part of the South made entirely of Dutch angles. (laughs) Yeah, Dutch angles and sepia tone. The main experts. Exports of this town. And he, when he was, he's surrounded by this armed mob. I guess they're mostly armed with, no, they had guns. They had guns. Yeah, several. And I swear the tenor of the moment was he was going to offer up his younger companion as a sex slave. I was very sure that. <laughs> he touched his face with the back of his hand and kind of pushed him forward. I'm like, oh, no, this is happening. Yeah, you got to yeah. do what you got to do. But no, he goes like, he has a pretty mouth. You should take him. <laughs> he goes, well, <laughs> I'm going to do a miracle, but I, I can't do it while he's watching or whatever. So he sends the, the younger guy down the road and he's like, all right, sign, sign, punch you in the face, run away. <laughs> <laughs> 
And this he, he's telling the story to his wife, who she's witnessed him knock two at least two people out, and maybe explain to him what a gun is. This is what I was talking. About. This is another <laughs> yeah. confirmation yeah. that Willard does not know what a gun is, but also another like lynch mob of guys with guns who don't know what guns are because they get right. one of them gets punched in the face, and yeah. none of them are like, oh, we shoot this guy now. It, it takes them a while to realize they have guns that are metal tubes that shoot gun, bullets. Yeah, they, we hear them shooting after him far after he's run away. Like a minute later. <laughs> right. It's, uh, yeah. Also, do they know that guns actually have that kind of range? Because <laughs> he literally punches their leader in the face, starts to run, and then we hear gunshots, but they don't. Are they aiming? It was literally not far enough away that they shouldn't. They should have hit him. He should be dead. <laughs> Hold on, come back. We want to do a magic trick for you now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gun magic trick. Stand on that path. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're going to take another quick break, and then we'll be back with more passive-aggressive boxing movie action in Act 2 of The Fighting Preacher. Hey, hon, what do you think of for dinner? Ooh. I, if, if you say Hot Pockets, I'm getting my hammer. Oh. Okay. Um, oh, I have a question. If you're going to ask if we can make lasagna with fruit roll-ups and gummy bears, the answer is still no. Why do you even ask me then? <sighs> has this ever happened to you? This has definitely never happened to any of them. Okay, but has stuff like that ever happened to you? Well, why not solve that age-old question the easy way with America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. And not only is it convenient, but you get better value. HelloFresh is 30% cheaper than shopping at grocery stores with pre-portioned ingredients that ensure you won't spend money on excess food that ends up in the trash. HelloFresh also offers you the flexibility you need to easily customize your order, change your delivery day, update your food preferences, adjust your plan size, or skip a week whenever you need to. Look, we've been using HelloFresh for years, and we're still getting awesome new dishes all the time. They even send amazing seasonal recipes like pumpkin cinnamon rolls. That's right, pumpkin cinnamon rolls. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful14 and use the code Awful14 to get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Awful14 and use Awful14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Now, about dinner tonight. Warm pocket. <sighs> From the makers of The Fighting Preacher and, well, damn, pretty much every Mormon movie set before 1950. You get out of here, Mormon, or as we call you in our very real, very relevant historical slur, Mormy. Comes a story of triumph that is as hard to fact check as it is to believe. We'll kill you, Mormons, and then we'll write in every newspaper and historical document and personal letter and also several other pieces of physical evidence that you started it. A story of hope, faith, and people randomly changing their minds about 20 minutes before Act 3. I'll tell you this. No Mormon will ever marry my daughter. And that's 60 minutes into the movie. Never mind, I love you. You're the son I never had. This summer, Mormon Hearsay Story Movie. And we're back. And now a midwife shows up at the Beans house finally. And I was really hoping at this moment that she was actually a spy sent by the Anti-Mormon League to get in. <laughs> but, but no. Okay, we need to talk about this because her performance is I'm a spy. Right? Okay, it seemed like she was totally. a fucking spy, right? She's not. It never plays out. So that means that actress just walked in and was like, hello, today in America, <laughs> where we both are, I am here for baby delivering human not wanna, gonna eat it you want to be a normal midwife did you is that <laughs> you're a chupacabra what <laughs> there it is and again this is where we get the payoff to the him not delivering the baby thing she's like oh you're not gonna have to deliver the baby and he's like oh that's too bad i really wanted to help with the vagina stretching and the watching you shit on a table and Big Chungus coming over and ripping you in half in front of me and then everyone acting like it's normal and never letting you deal with it. <laughs> he literally does the hug her and look up and mouth the words, thank you to Jesus. But yep. The upside is in the remake of this movie where he's the villain, we don't have to rewrite his character at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we cut over to the birth of the baby. It's a girl, which in Mormonism is a prank. <laughs> and they've named her... Palmyra, the eighth worst name you can give a girl. 
Well, yes, but in the Mormon tradition, it's spelled P A L M E I G H R U H. No, this is a Mormon thing to name your kids after where they're born. My given name is 2300 East. <laughs> but there's a great moment here where he goes up the stairs to see her, and six years pass, and young Palmyra comes down the stairs. And they do it in a single shot, which I actually kind of appreciated the fact that he went up the stairs. He clearly jumped out a window, ran around the house <laughs> so he could come back into the scene. And I'm like, all right. That's a good point. It was yeah. really good. That's what had to happen. <laughs> so now we cut to the little girl's first day of school. And wouldn't you know it, the teacher is going to be mean to her, too. <laughs> by the way, little Palmyra is by far the best actor in this movie. Oh, oh she's yeah, for fucking sure. delightful yeah. as, like, as an actor, but also the character does some really good stuff. Oh, yeah. Including in this scene. So yeah. <laughs> one here, here's one detail. The yeah, teacher, are we talking about the comedy? The comedy beat? The, yeah, this is the funniest thing <laughs> in the entire movie, but in a lot of movies. So the teacher puts Palmyra in a desk all the way in the back of the class, but it's not just in the back. It's facing the wall instead yeah. of facing mm-hmm. the front of the, the room. So it's just like, you deal with that fucking Mormon, whatever. And immediately... Teacher starts the lesson and Palmyra starts dragging the desk back into the right direction. So fucking loud. It so was loud. The best. So loud. Look, credit where credit's due. I think this was supposed to be a comedy beat and it fucking hit that jam. There's seven <laughs> minutes of this movie where this little girl's just like, so the first president of the United States is George. <laughs> hey, Palmyra, you want to stop? So the first president of the United <laughs> So I wanted her to like go all the way to the front of the room, like just like <laughs> dragging other desks out of the way, or she just or she just moves her desk until it's out the door and she leaves, <laughs> just smuggles herself out. Also, there's a grown man who is six four, two hundred fifty pounds in this class. <laughs> yeah. Eldon is huge. Eldon is yeah. forty. That's the true. one room schoolhouse goes all the way through the PhD level. <laughs> So now that the movie has thoroughly established its persecution narrative, it's going to remind us that black people existed j- just for one scene, but that oh. black people did, in fact, exist in 1905, too. This is the most amazing scene. You it's guys. the magic black man. Hooray. Can you imagine not recognizing the optics on a black guy just showing up out of nowhere to do free labor for a white woman? Yes. They do not catch the problem with any of that that is the scene that's what it happens is, here yeah literally he shows up and he's like looks like you're having trouble chopping wood i'll just start doing it now i'm not afraid of hard work you're good people she's like lamanite sorry i mean <laughs> hello <laughs> bigotry is hard for both of us equally right because yeah. of our two situations being the same great yeah and he basically shows up to spout every line of dialogue that morgan freeman would get before he turned 30 Right. <laughs> yeah, and I just want to throw this out there. This is, and you probably already guessed this, also based on one of Rebecca's fireside chats. And oh. again, all of the transcripts are too long. It would fill up too much show time to read them. But the way she tells this story, it's a ghost story. She's like, there I was all on my own, and then a magical black man chopped all my wood and vanished. And literally he vanishes. She says, I'm going to go get you a piece of pie. She's yelling at him through the door while she goes in to get the pie. And when she comes out, he's fucking gone. Like, yep. <laughs> I love the optics of that where she goes inside and like, you know, if it's not bad enough, she shuts and locks the door behind her. <laughs> <laughs> she, she rolls up the window to her house. <laughs> <laughs> It is a whole scene to justify the notion that it's just as hard to be a Mormon as it is to be a black guy. This guy said so, but, uh, you know, he doesn't trust her pie enough to stick around, I guess. Yeah, I really want to hear that story from the black guy's perspective. (laughs) Hey, honey, how was your day? Oh, it was, uh, it was weird. It was weird. Oh, yeah? How so? Okay, so, you know those Mormons that everyone's always picking on? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I see the woman, the woman Mormon, chopping wood outside, and she's crying. So I offered to help her. Oh, that was nice of you. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was. So I'm chopping her wood, and she says, okay, let me go inside and get a piece of pie to thank you. Oh, she 
She didn't offer to pay you? She did not offer to pay me. No, no. With pie, mm-hmm. that was it. That's kind of rude considering right. yeah, the time that is period. Rude. Yeah. Well, it gets race. worse, actually. I'm waiting for the pie and I'm chopping. I finish. I wait for like 20 more minutes after that. And then I just leave. Didn't even get the pie. Didn't even get the pie. Asshole. Right? Yeah. Fucking Mormons. Did you know they won't believe that we have souls for 64 more years? I do know that about them. Yes. That is true about them because we are black people. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's must yeah, have that's been what it, right? That's what happened. <laughs> yep. 100%. So we check on the daughter. She's getting hated at school some more. We have a weird bread eating montage. (laughs) Guys, you want to help me out with this? Okay, so these are things that that non-Mormons won't catch. But yes, they do the sacrament. It is is basically a Eucharist. But since there's no congregation there, they have to do it just sort of by themselves. Oh, do you guys do like full like baguette instead of the little cracker? It, well, it's it's Wonder Bread. In fact, wait, literally, literally, and, and I would have loved. <laughs> most I'm not kidding. I would have loved this scene so much if he just reached into a bag of Wonder Bread and pulled out <laughs> one slice. It can be any bread. They can you can choose whatever bread you want. That is that is one of the perks of being a Ooh, Mormon. That's cool. Avocado toast. Are you allowed to have butter? Because in this <laughs> montage, no, it's no. nothing on the bread, and they're all like, "It's <laughs> 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 bread." No, just bread. And be, to be clear, it's not just not buttered. It's not wine. So it's bread and water. Yeah. Mm. Literally. And you're not allowed to butter. No, no, no. that would be that would be blasphemous. I don't blasphemous. think anyone's ever tried. Inquire. Maybe ask the 12 about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're going to we're going to speed ahead some more here. They had another kid. Don't worry. He will never matter to the plot. <laughs> no, this is again. So this is another fireside chat. We're, we're going to lead into this. Now they're hosting missionaries who I just want to say, hey, congrats on your 20th century missionaries looking exactly the same as your modern missionaries. <laughs> oh, my God. It is the the wardrobe of they these do. four missionaries is so bad. Later, one of them is wearing he's wearing a bowler hat. He's wearing a jacket with lapels that are four feet wide. Yeah, very large. A modern white shirt, like dress down shirt and a 1970s polyester tie. It is the weirdest <laughs> mishmash of clothing. They look like they're all on trial for a sex crime and they're smiling widely. Yeah. And they're, exactly. they're psyched about it. I the, the, When they walked up to the door, they were dressed like Prohibition era gangsters and they were carrying giant suitcases. Like, get out! <laughs> well, and the, the other thing that you guys aren't going to have caught is that she introduces, they introduce themselves in a way that missionaries wouldn't because it, all missionaries would be like, I'm Elder Smith, this is Elder Jones, that's Elder blah, blah, blah. But they say their full names, and the reason is because the last name is Elder Gordon Hinckley, who grows up to be one of the presidents of the church. It was just it was a really cool like little nod. To oh, the fact it was that, like, like a deep cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Marvel nerds loved it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Winter soldiers in the background. <laughs> yeah, it literally, he was he was actually originally going to be played by Stan Lee, but <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we get the like majesty of Joseph Smith's forest scene, but it's it's just a shitty forest in Ian <laughs> Heath's hometown. Yes, and that, I swear <laughs> this is what they did. They use what must have been hero shots from, like, you know, Mormons, you know, the Mormon church filming in actual Palmyra. So when you're, like, looking at the forest, it's this gorgeous forest, and then you cut back to them, and they're in this freaking field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and literally this little girl is giving them a tour of it and being like, welcome to the sacred grove where Joseph saw God and Jesus. Do not eat any of the mushrooms you find. <laughs> <laughs> or do and start your own church. Or do. I mean, a yeah, lot you'll, you'll get your own religion out of it. It's cool. Yeah, and they're all pretending to be crying here and it's like this big spiritual moment and then they finally get back to the house from the sacred grove and one of the missionaries is like, here, little girl, here's a tip. For the magical tour. And she's, <laughs> so good. I fucking love this character. She's so good. She, she's she's like, oh, a nickel. Cool. 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 Yeah. I showed you the literal landing spot of God. That's fair for a nickel. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and, fu- and so finally, one of them's like, fine, I'll, I'll give you a dime. But he, t- or he, t- he takes the nickel back and gives he her a takes different the thing. Nickel back. <laughs> yeah. He gives change. Dick. She's like, cool. I'm trying to tithe over here, you cheap fucking bastards. Fine. Uh, whatever. 
All I've got is a five. Do you have four or one? No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that night, the elders are telling Rebecca how famous she is for giving everyone a nice dinner. And she's going to tell them just how she manages it. Podcast listener, whatever you think she's about to say, <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> you are not ready for what's about. First of all, I do want to point out that she is definitely not wearing turn of the century temple garments in this scene. Because I can see her whole collarbone sweat. <laughs> oh, no. well, interesting. Speaking of which, here's the story she tells. You guys tell me when it becomes porn to you. <laughs> so she says, I'm chopping wood and weeping. And I was like, okay, now, been there. Been now. There. And now. Yeah. Now. Okay, Eli <laughs> says now. Porn for me. Eli yeah. says now. <laughs> and then this impossibly good looking man shows up at the front door. And she's like, this beautiful man shows up at the front door and. I didn't know how to pay for whatever. You forgot the pizza. He was paying. The pizza. <laughs> but but then, I'm here to fix the cobble. Right. <laughs> Carl Hungus shows up, except yeah. way more attractive. And then she adds, and also some other old guy was there already at my house. And I was like, okay, interesting. Yeah, this is shaping up interesting. <laughs> okay. It's a stepson thing. It's cool. And then one of them, the the young guy, turned into Jesus here? Is that what happened? <laughs> no. yep. Yeah. Well, he sh he shows up in the form of a stately southern mayor and then turns into Jesus off screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> he is literally, he, when he shows up, he is literally like Franklin Graham's pool boy. Or right. <laughs> not Franklin Graham. Yeah. Who's the other one? Jerry Falwell Jr. Falwell Got Jr.'s it. pool boy. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, uh, apparently at the end he turns into Jesus. So she Literally, she has just told these four missionaries that she fucking saw Jesus, and that's just like meh to them. Yeah. yeah. They're just like, yeah, cool, but, you know, pretty run of the mill, I guess. Her story is, how do I make so many pot roasts? Because I literally received a pep talk from the savior of the world, Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> and they're like, cool, cool, cool. So we're headed to Rochester next. <laughs> yeah, literally. Who is the other old guy? This is, this is what happens when a Mormon woman sees Jesus. It's oh, only, he, it only counts if she's a man. He's another <laughs> famous old Mormon. I, oh. I forget who it was, but it's another known character. Oh, so she added that to the to the chat just to be like, and a guy was there to witness this all. This is all real. Yeah, there was an apostle there, so it's yeah. true. You have to believe it. It's Obviously, true. this came from one of her fireside chats, and clearly, you know, I bet you that guy stayed with her, but he's so much older that he was long since dead by the time she was telling this story. So oh, it was just a perfect little perfect crime. of yep, yeah, exactly. perfect crime. <laughs> this is also where the little girl comes home and she's sad because everyone was bullying her and the mom tries to do the, like, nobody like Joseph Smith either pep talk. And she's like, yeah, but didn't they murder him? And she's like, yep. <laughs> yeah, they did. They did. That's a that's a really good point. But Willard is bothered by this, which means he's going to go have a, like, punching memory montage in the barn. Yeah. <laughs> Rebecca goes looking for him. And, and sure enough, he's just sitting there staring to the middle distance. I wanted her to be like, Han, you uh, having a doodly doo earlier in the meeting? <laughs> He literally, he's, he's like, I don't get it. People still don't like us here. I've tried everything. Right cross, jab, uppercut. <laughs> nothing gets through to these people. It almost seems like violence isn't the answer. <laughs> and then his wife goes, well, maybe you should try all of them together. That's yes. brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Literally, her answer is, eh, let's try fighting more. Seriously? Seriously, they're going to. So I was excited because I was like, OK, they're going to box. Now. There's going to be boxing. Finally. But, but literally their plan is to punch people until they're Mormon and to make friends that way. That's what's happening now. And can we just say, honestly, if they just went through town beating the shit out of everyone to we're not going to take it. This is both my favorite movie and I'm a Mormon now. And it's close to that. It is pretty close. Oh, my God. So that night he's eaten his pre-fight entire pie. I sympathized with him during this scene. <laughs> and the wife, why is this in the movie? The wife just shows up and she's fat shames him for eating a pie. <laughs> she's literally like, babe, you, you haven't fought for a while. You're like super fat and lazy now. Maybe have an old timey Rocky training montage just to take some of the edge off. <laughs> And they, they really rip off Rocky here, like raw eggs, yes. you know, pu punching stuff. He even does the like arms up in the air at the top of the hill celebration thing. I, it was 
it's a weird homage forward several hundred years. Yeah, but th- this is also where we get my favorite moment in the entire movie, which is where Palmyra, he's holding up his hands and she's she's boxing at his hands and then the wife distracts them both and she cold clocks him in the jaw. Oh, so, so hard. hard. It is so good. This kid is the greatest. She really <laughs> hits the actor. The actor yeah. definitely got hurt. <laughs> it was like, God, it's like Troll 2 again. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, and then there's the scene where he he's part of his training is to run up the hill he's trying to purchase with a hammer in each hand. Yep. Which is probably not the best strategy when you're trying to purchase land. <laughs> mm-hmm. To go charging onto it with, <laughs> with two hammers. Yeah. So now it's fight night. And, okay, this is the weirdest. Why did they include this whole thing in the movie? Okay, let's talk about the challengers. None of the challengers are in shape. There's one guy who is around his age. Everyone else looks like John fucking Goodman. Yeah, (laughs) or a child. (laughs) Yeah, there's also a child. Or a baby. When, When they go into the montage of him beating these people up, at one point, a child comes up to him in the ring. He uppercuts the kid. The kid's head flies off, basically. He he killed a child. Like, in real life, a professional boxer hit a kid like that. The kid's dead. Yeah. Yeah. He turned that kid into a Pez dispenser. Yeah. Yeah. This this montage is so weird because you're like, okay, this must be what wins the town over. Except it's not. We just watch him beating the shit out of people and everyone in the crowd being like, Boo! Yeah, boo! <laughs> Stop hitting us! In in the remake of this movie, this is where the town finally comes together to try and rid themselves of this guy, and he cleans their clocks. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, it's so weird. It's lit, like literally the first guy steps up, he hits Buster, and the guy's name is Buster. He hits him twice, and the guy is knocked completely out, and that's the most he hits anybody. Like no one in this town can take a punch. And for the rest of the fights, it's all one punch. It's like it's like everybody knew the one secret moment from from Punch Out from Tyson's punch. Like they hit him in the <laughs> stomach when he was rushing in. But yeah, all, all the perfect times, one punch every time. Yeah, he's basically like Brad Pitt in Snatch. Just- <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> now we're fucked. But again, it's just such a weird tonal shift because it's it's half comedy. It's right. Oh look, he's beating up the whole town. Except the town hate him now. So at the right. end, yes. at the end of it. The wife and daughter are like, oh, maybe you should try being nice. And he's like, hey, maybe you should try suggesting this before I rent a boxing ring in the middle of town and print out a hundred copies of why don't you fucking fight me? And he doesn't just knock everybody out. He's doing backflips and like, oh, he's push ups. Gloating like an asshole. Like, yep. God. N- it and, is amazing. And none of this is successful, obviously, because literally yeah. as people are walking out, they're like, hey, man, yeah. You're better at fucking punching. That's nothing. We still hate you. Just so yeah. It's they clear. literally say the truest, li- like the bad guys in this movie, literally say the truest line in the movie, which is just because you're a good fighter doesn't mean you're a good man. Yeah. What, well, what were you yeah. trying to get out of this? What was your? What was the end point you were hoping for? <laughs> I'm doing an arc. Just give me a second. <laughs> so that night, he's flashing back to getting knocked out at the beginning of the movie again. For some reason. <laughs> yeah. And the ref is like, dude, I'm calling this fight. I don't know how you were like world. You're seven and seven right now with three draws. <laughs> Somehow you're up for world champion. I'm calling this fight. You're knocked out. And Willard in this dilly do is like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to use this later in my life to inspire me. He said, I'm going to change tactics. And the guy's like, hey, man, I'm the referee. I'm not your coach. <laughs> I don't care what you do. Don't involve me in your doodly doos for later. I don't. This is just my job. I'm going to punch back now. Trust me. It's pretty advanced boxing stuff. That's right. <laughs> I like how it happens, though. So the flashback ends and he has like this realization at this moment and they're in bed together. So he, he's like, hey, Rebecca, honey, honey, honey. I realized I had a little doodly do. Uh, punching people <laughs> doesn't usually change their religion. I don't know why I hadn't thought of this earlier, but I think this is a good end. She's like, oh, my God, you're so boring. And she immediately goes back to sleep. <laughs> she is asleep. He does that thing that you do with the partner where you, you say something and they're asleep and you're like, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Wait, what? Why do you do that? You shouldn't this do that. This is a, a healthy part of every that relationship. the opposite of healthy. If, if you are a night monologuer, are any of you night monologuers in relationships? No. What? No, okay. Then I'm just going to tell this to our podcasting audience. If you are a night monologuer <laughs> at some point in your life, you will be monologuing. Your significant other will be asleep. And then you're like, whatever. It's fine. 
Great idea for a new podcast. <laughs> Deck the Hallmarks. Make fun of Hallmark movies. Whatever. It's fine. That's actually a really good pun. Thank you. I literally <laughs> just, just lie there and do that monologue from The Jerk. Uh, to my wife all the time. <laughs> all I need is this remote control. <laughs> no, no, the the lying in bed monologue, the the where where he does the the, the tongue twister. Anyway, it's fine. It's oh a, it's yeah, a very okay. Funny no, that makes even more yeah. sense than my mm-hmm. thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, the main character's wife just got bored of the fucking movie and fell asleep again. So that means we get another break, and then we'll be back with the big finale of the Fighting Preacher. Hey, Heath, uh, what's with the, uh, the ring there? The ring, yeah. No, that's a great question. So Eli was really inspired by this week's episode, and he's converting everyone in his neighborhood by boxing them. I see. Does Eli know how to box? No, no, he does not at all. Yeah, I, I can see that. Has this, has this won anybody over? No, nope, not even one. Zero. But he sure is losing to, like... Everyone at once. Yep, yep. Probably should not have started the evening by doing individualized roasts for everyone who came in. That was part of ah, that. Yeah, yeah. That was a bad idea. Bad idea. Is that a child jumping on his head? That is a child, yes. He roasted her real good. Uh, of course. Okay. Got ethnic. <laughs> you know, when Raycon first started advertising with us, they sent us a free pair to try, and they were so comfortable that I never saw them again. Hey, you said I could have them. I said you could use them. And I'm not done using them yet. Right. But honestly, I love the Raycons so much that I bought another pair. And unlike every other pair of wireless earbuds I've ever owned, they didn't crap out on me three months later. In fact, two years later, I'm still using them. And between podcasts and audiobooks, they get hours of use every day. Yeah, mine broke, though. No, they didn't. Yeah, see? Did 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 you hit these with a hammer? Why do you always assume it was a hammer? It was a baseball bat. Why would you do that? Because if I waited for them to quit working on their own, I'd be waiting forever. And I'm ready to upgrade to their new everyday earbuds. What are their new everyday earbuds? With an improved rubber oil look and feel and optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these are impressive before you even start listening. You get three new sound profiles to make sure everything you're listening to sounds its best. There's even an all-new awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings instead. Well, do they still have the built-in microphone so you can take calls in the eight hours of playtime with a 32-hour total battery life? They sure do. And they're still half the price of other premium audio brands. Mm, That sounds good, but what if we're not satisfied in the first 45 days of our purchase? No worries. Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. And right now, GAM listeners can get 15% off the Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash GAM. That's buyraycon.com slash gam to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash gam. Oh, I, I, sorry. Is there like a, a tagline I'm supposed to read? Or I figured you had a trailing joke or something for the end. Uh, no. What? Nothing? Nope. Oh, I miss Eli. Harsh. And we're back. And now Willard has his big new plan. Which, it seemed like it was going to be, you know, be nice to people and not punch them. But his actual new plan is make his wife bake pies for the entire town and bribe <laughs> yep. them into being one. <laughs> his, his new plan is that his wife does a bunch of work. How Mormon of him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, do you want one of my wife's pies? Apparently, they can scare away helpful black guys. So that's nice. That's a plus, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And the first person he's going to deliver one to is Mr. Never. That's the guy who owns the hill. And they have this meta moment where he's like, I mean, you gave me a pie. Am I supposed to like you now because you gave me a pie? And he's like, yeah, I think so. And he's like, all right, well, not till act three, damn it. Not till act three. (laughs) Well, I think giving him a pie is a better strategy than charging at him with two hammers. (laughs) (laughs) They're learning. They're, They're learning. He also, there's also a shot of him like going down the street handing out vegetables to random (laughs) passersby, which I just want the camera to then go back down the street after he's done it and like literally catch everybody going, did that Mormon guy just give you a vegetable? Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck was that? Steve got a pie. This is bullshit. Whatever. (laughs) They're just throwing them out next to the big, (laughs) they throw them out in a garbage can and there's a bunch of books of Mormon there too. (laughs) (laughs) I felt like he should have been saying while he was handing out rutabagas, you know, 
Sorry about your brother. Is your is your husband okay? <laughs> <laughs> let's not let's not bicker and argue about who paralyzed who. <laughs> so meanwhile, Rachel's going door to door to also try to win people over. You remember you can't pet my dog lady from the beginning? Well, she's sick, and Rachel has brought her some potato soup, which she's gonna take it upon herself to spoon feed someone without asking. <laughs> oh, you're spoon feeding me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't realize you're gonna spoon feed me. Okay. Can I just do it? Can I do it, please? Can I do it? <laughs> ah, the sensual art of potato soup feeding. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty sexy. I just want to know, she literally barges into this woman's house while the woman is convalescing in bed and says, I've been told you're not doing well. By whom? <laughs> you have no friends in this town. How are you getting updates on everybody's health? Unless you're the reason that she's not doing well. I, I don't know what's happening. Or right she now. went door to door and was like, cancer? Anybody got cancer? Need soup? Cancer needs soup? No? Okay, next. And she finally landed on somebody who was like, I do have cancer. Okay. She's just walking into people's houses hoping they're sick. Yeah. But just, just this is a call forward. Remember, this woman who's very sick and very old will be alive about 25 years from now to say yeah, goodbye to she them. will be very, very well, alive. Well, because of Mormon magic. Oh, more than 25 years. It's like <laughs> right. 50 years from now. Yeah. <laughs> We get a little cut of him non-consensually fixing people's fences. He likes putting up a guy's <laughs> fence and the guy's like, hey, man, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm, I'm doing a metaphor. Fuck off. <laughs> right. And he fixes the fence with a single nail, mm -hmm. just to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's when you run onto the property with hammers. Then it makes a little <laughs> bit more sense. <laughs> and then they insert this very sneakily, but I guess this is for like the diehard Rebecca's Fireside chat fans in the fucking audience. So one of the things that Rebecca and Willard did a lot of is magic Mormon oil healing. Right. The movie will show us this with one 14th of a second scene, probably because you don't want to work in, oh, and by the way, we promised to cure a bunch of people who ended up dying anyways into your, <laughs> into your narrative. But yeah, that's what this next scene is. They show them like healing people with their Mormon powers. Eli, you have massively underestimated how normal that is in Mormonism. <laughs> that's still to this day. No, I'm serious. That to this day, they do that all the fucking time. If someone get, if any Mormon gets sick, somebody, some priesthood holder, which means any male over the age of nineteen, <laughs> will dump oil on their head and give them a blessing. This this is a true. If you have, if you know a devout Mormon man, if the, if there's one in your life, or you you know work with one or something, you will notice a little stainless steel vial on their keychain. Seriously, that has blessed olive oil in it. I, 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 it is ubiquitous. I'm not kidding. And as a matter of fact, if you want to just fuck with them, ask them for a priesthood blessing and they'll give it to you. And that's funny. Wow. Then you have to shower. <laughs> Your that's... salad is lacking a little bit of zing. You're just like, hey, could you do a priesthood blessing on my, yeah, no, bless uh, the salad. my Caesar salad? Do they have trouble at the TSA if it's over three ounces? <laughs> that's a great question. These are fantastic. They have to drink the oil before they go through. <laughs> <laughs> they have to bless a whole bunch of people before they, they get it fly. back out when they get to the other side. <laughs> doing it to everyone in the pat downs. Yeah. So the next day, the little girl's going to try it, too. They're doing nice things for the kids at school. But when dad finds out that the kids are being mean to her at school fucking 14 years later, he's like, oh, I will teach you to fight all of these children, all of them. <laughs> and he, he tries to drag her away to teach her to fight. And the, 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 his wife pulls the girl back. And looks at him like Skyler looked at Walt in season five when everything went to shit. <laughs> Just terrified of him. Okay, but I do actually struggle. Like, I sympathize with this scene. I struggle with this, right? Because I have a kid now and some innocent 11-year-old normie in Jersey is going to be like, ha ha, you're fat. And I'm going to hit that child with my Toyota Camry. Like, I have no <laughs> fucks for the humans. You're going to miss that child with your Toyota Camry more oh, no, I'm gonna, I Look, if there's anything I know about me, I can hit things with my Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> On purpose? I'll pretend to be parking next to him and I'll do it. <laughs> All right, so back at school, everyone's still being mean to Palmyra. Tongue sticking out girl is sticking her tongue out at her, but oh, she gave the girl a doll, and now she doesn't know what to think. Yeah, because, yeah, it's 
she fixes all the meanness by threatening another girl with voodoo is what she does. Oh, I, if, if that doll had had a dagger stuck through its chest, I would have respected this movie. <laughs> if I'm mean girl, I'm like, fuck you. Let me get a pie. I heard you were giving out pies. I don't want you to doll. Can I get a rutabaga maybe? I don't know. Just this, this doll sucks. And now we're going to have what I'm going to go ahead and say is definitely the weirdest scene in the movie. Easily. So Willard is helping some dude out with his shed or his fence or who fucking cares. And he's just like, oh, you know, you sure have been nice to us lately. Uh, sorry, we've been so mean to you. But I've been meaning to ask you, are you a polygamist? <laughs> <laughs> and Willard's like, no, we don't do that now. And the guy's like, oh, okay. Okay. I was, <laughs> I was hoping. Well, the guy, I mean, Willard's like, no, but I was a bad enough husband that my first wife left left me for an abuser. Does that count? And then killed herself. <laughs> and then and killed herself. Killed okay. It never comes back. Ooh. But it should have happened. He drops that nugget in with 18 minutes left. Like, <laughs> and yeah. so casual. He's in the middle of this conversation with this guy, and they're just trying to. The guy's just wanting to like, hey, I want to, I want to hear a fuck story about the like sister wives. <laughs> and then he's like, I'm a domestic <laughs> abuser. She killed herself. And the guy's like. Okay. <laughs> kind of fucked up the rapport we had going there for cool. a second. Uh, you can see Willard feel he's wrecked the moment. He's like, anyways, you want to hear about the stuff Rebecca does in bed? Will it bring the moment back? I realized what you were going you for now. You murdered somebody. You need yeah. to leave. Okay. It was, yeah, it was, it was like one of those things where somebody feels like, oh, we're actually sharing now. Let me drag out like literally the worst things about me. <laughs> this will be fun. We're going to talk. We're we're bonding. Okay, now you go. You say when you uh, abused a woman until she killed her. <laughs> Who did you kill? Nothing. <laughs> that has to be the fence. We'll do the fence. We'll just do the fence thing. Can we go back to the fence thing? <laughs> yeah. Now, so the next day, <gasps> who should show up but Mean Girl? Mean ticker, Stick Her Tongue Out Girl, and she wants to play with her now. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> Belmira yells up to mom. She's like, can I go play with my best friend now? And mean girl's like, all right, relax. I mean, like easy, come on. Easy. My mom obviously made me come over here because you he gave me a stupid doll. It's, <laughs> right. it's one of those. And then there's this scene, and it's very clearly supposed to be this moment of triumph, right? Mr. Never has agreed to sell them the hill. And so there's this, like, again, the music is swelling in the background as the lawyer is like, they have said they will sell you the hill for the $35,000 you offered to sell it to them for. Yeah. Yep. The Lord softened his heart and convinced him to sell, and all it took was many, many years and his eventual death. It's basically the same <laughs> as the Moses story. <laughs> what lesson are we supposed to learn here? So now the title card is going to tell us many years of service later. That's that's literally the, <laughs> the title card. He's 70. We see that because he's got a happy 70th birthday card sitting on his right. desk. He's 70 years old, and he gets a letter from the church being like, Ah, that's probably good. 25 years in Palmyra, you could come home now. <laughs> yeah, literally. Thanks so much for taking care of our property for so long. All that work you've done ingratiating yourself to the locals and enduring their cruelty has brought you exactly nothing. Come back to Utah where you don't know anybody anymore. And you have no job skills. You're homeless now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they <laughs> hug each other and stand there for like two minutes going, we've, we've wasted our lives. Yeah. It was oh, all for nothing. This, this was so fucking Fuck. dark. Why? Look, this movie is like, oh, these missionaries, they did the longest mission in missionary history. They should be like, oh, I love it here. This is our home, and I'm so glad we did it. And instead, he's just like, all our friends are dead, and I feel as though I've wasted my life. Please don't give fireside chats for the remaining 25 years after my death. We need to enter the labor force in fucking Utah now? I don't know. Is there a boxing senior tour? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, it's not like these guys amassed wealth while they were there. They just fucking worked a farm the entire time. What are they supposed to... What are septuagenarians supposed to do... Once they just move across back across the country. Uh, spoiler alert, we are going to get that in the Breakfast Club close. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, now it's going to cut to someone from the town giving the goodbye speech, which is like, we hated these assholes. Then he fought us. That, that was a weird day. But then he gave us stuff. We liked that. Um, and now we like them. Do you know who's giving that speech? Who? 
It's the old man from the drugstore who wouldn't sell to them 25 years ago. <laughs> he looks pretty good for 115, yeah. I got to say. Okay, the time so as he's giving this speech, we are panning over everyone. School teacher is alive. She's 97 apparently. <laughs> Fat guy who was at the door the first night with the gun. This man was 70 the first time. He's 120. Yeah. Literally everybody in the entire town. Old sick lady. Old sick lady is yeah. there. Yeah, this is like uh, Tuck Everlasting was a horror movie. Yeah, I, I wrote in my notes, the twist of this movie is that everyone in Palmyra is fucking immortal. It's it's Mormon Brigadoon happening somehow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, there's one last appearance of the magic black guy as they leave town. Oh, yes. So as they are, as they're riding out of town for the last time and everyone is Brigadoon waving away, magic black guy will step in front of the camera one last time. I screamed when he stepped in front of the camera. It is so good. He might as well have literally held up a physical copy of the script and then shrugged at the camera like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> He's just running after the camera. I'm, I'm over five. I'm over five now. It's over, over five. five. Fuck you. I have more lines. <laughs> yeah. So we flash back one last time to him boxing and he won that boxing match. The one that he flashed back to. Yeah, this was supposed to be the character at his lowest point as a, you know, theme for the movie. But no, he won. He won. Yeah. And then we get the the Breakfast Club closed for the movie. They moved back to Utah. He was a uh, Temple Square missionary. So he, he professionally ran away from Eli when he came to visit Salt Lake City. <laughs> uh, Rebecca did her fireside chats. We talked about that. And they had the longest mission in mission history. <laughs> 24 years. Oh my God. Is that really the record? I I would, I, yeah. No one else would subject themselves to that kind of bullshit. So yes, I'm sure that is the record. <laughs> you have to be, you have to be punch drunk in order to, to agree to that. The thing is you go on a mission for two years, but they add a year on for every assault charge. So. <laughs> okay. Well, then that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. One other question, actually, does the LDS church now do anything with Kamora Hill, the magical hill that, that oh, they bought? Oh, my God. Oh, you yeah, missed I mean, it. it. We've yeah. all just barely missed it because they used to do the most amazing thing. Every year, they would have what they called the Hill Kamora pageant. Mm -hmm. What? And it was a full-on thousands of Mormons, from mostly from Utah, would go there and for one week they would rehearse this pageant and they would all be like, and it's one of these awful things where there would be playback. So none of them had to memorize lines. They would just, so their <laughs> character would just, they would wave their arms fiercely when their character is talking yeah. to try and indicate that it's their turn or whatever. Doug and I went to see a pageant, not the Hill Kimura one, but one that was here in Utah. And uh, it and was it, delightful. The one in Kimura is it's a cast of thousands. It's a, it's an enormous. It was. They stopped doing it, I think, two years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, they put on this enormous love, kind of passion play thing with a bunch of white people dressed as Indians. But, uh, you know, I don't know if that's why they stopped doing it, but probably not. No. Yeah. <laughs> OK. It would it would have been. It, <laughs> I really wanted to see it. And I'm very sad that I never. I'm got sad to. we can't go to that now. That I would, know. Yeah. But for, now mm. it's just a tourist attraction. You just go go <laughs> around and. And it's literally just a bump in the land. So, Got it. All right. I think that is going to do it for The Fighting Preacher. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet. We found another bad movie. Eli, what's on deck? Well, regular listeners to the podcast will remember that last year we covered the Mormon hit The Other Side of Heaven. And right after we did, just as Mormon Movie Month ended, they released the sequel, The Other Side of Heaven 2, Fire Faith. So... Fuck yeah, we're watching that one. I'm so glad you guys didn't choose us for that <laughs> <one>. <laughs> All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to wrap it up. Huge thanks to Dan and Doug for joining us. And uh, where can everybody hear more from you guys? Well, you can find us, obviously, wherever podcasts are sold. Ours is free, by the way, so that's kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, have just to be. the How-To Heretic. <laughs> look it up. Go enjoy it. It's way better than uh, some podcasts. Um, and worse than others. So. All right. Good. Go. I, you know what? We don't work enough rivalry into our plugs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't trying to start anything, uh, but but now I am. So now I am. so so now now it's a, a battle. <laughs> Got it. Where can we hear more from you? Fuck opening arguments. All right. right. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Boom. 
All right. And of course, a big thanks as well to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and I'll get you early access to an ad free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and DD Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Dan, Doug, and Eli, I'm Heath. Promise to work hard, turn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. Breakfast clip clothes. Animal House clothes. According to Amazon Prime, if you enjoyed The Fighting Preacher, you probably want to watch the reality TV show, Judge Faith. According to YouTube, if you enjoyed The Fighting Preacher, you probably want to watch All Quiet on the Western Front, which is a far, far less violent movie. <laughs> okay. Also, according to YouTube, if you enjoyed The Fighting Preacher, you also probably want to watch Zookeeper with Kevin James and literally The Birth of a Nation. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, what that's the amazing. Fuck? According to Matt, there's an algorithm that is like, you know what a lot of people like? The Fighting Preacher, Zookeeper, and the Birth of a Nation. <laughs> okay, but to be fair, if you were asked to describe this movie, it is the perfect combination of Zookeeper and the Birth of a Nation. <laughs> and so, yeah, you can just call me anytime on there. Dude, I can I can hardly read this. Yeah, sorry, I, I got them printed at big box supply stores, so they're not Hey, super... Eli, hey, Doug, what you doing? Oh, hey, Dan, I was just giving Doug my new business card, but they're all cheap and blurry. Well, Eli, why don't you just try Updog? What's Updog? Not much. What's up with you? <laughs> God damn it. it. I got it. No. I got it. No. Three Yo, you have to cut this. So good. <laughs> you have to cut this. This sucks. <laughs> Updog. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.